Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, uh, we're doing an upgrade. Taking one of my first aluminum 75% kits, and I'm going to guess if you've been in this for a while, one of yours as well. Um, this keyboard has presented me, I will say with some difficult times, but I've learned a lot about keyboards from this keyboard. So... As much as I'm quick to knock it, I did learn a lot from this. Now, the keyboard in question is the GMMK Pro. Now, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about this keyboard, and I have shared plenty myself. But they recently released a flex kit, an upgrade. And it's not just, okay, here's a plate and a couple extra gaskets. It includes an entirely different bottom case. Yes, metallic aluminum case. I will say I was hesitant at first. Will this actually make a difference? I had recently reached out to Glorious regarding an RMA or a, um, a warranty issue with my PCB. Um, it had basically lost its color calibration. So uh, if you selected reds, everything came off as more of a pink purple. Um, thankfully, they're Customer support was excellent. Um, they only had me, I sent pictures and video and you know, provided my invoice and everything like that. And within a week, I had a replacement PCB. Not to get too deep into it, but basically it popped up. Would you like to, to review this? It didn't ask me if I had a GMMK Pro, which I, I thought was, uh, was a little odd, but I guess they knew. <laughs> anyway, um, I was like, all right, it's a flex kit. They're going to send it to me. I just have to record the experience and share it with the world. I'll be honest. I honestly didn't think this was going to make much of a difference at all. So they sent me out the flex kit. I already had the PCB, which I was waiting to do anyway. And um, before I got to preparing for filming for it, they also said, hey, would you be interested in taking a look at these grapefruit GPBT die sub? And I'm like, mm, okay. And I got to say, I was not expecting much from them, but I like them. They're thick. They're nice. I just don't like the fact that the enter key, the only choice you have is a send. I'm pressing down the enter key. I get that a send is your brand, but if you're going to advertise, I might as well get the product for free. There was no optional enter key. To me, that's, that's a big... Um, that hits my OCD really bad because that should be enter, not ascend. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm putting something down. I'm not lifting something up by pressing enter. So um, I get that that's part of their whole spiel. But ascend? Come on. I mean, fine. If some people want to use it, that's fine. But there should be a regular enter key. There's normal keys for every other key. Why is there not an enter key? So basically, I took apart my GMMK, which with the clips that I'll show has been highly modified. I have opened up this keyboard at least probably close to a dozen times, if not just right under there. Uh, I've applied all sorts of mods to it, force break mod. I tried different fillers. I tried different layers of tape. Um, I tried polyfill. I tried uh, EVA. I tried a whole bunch of different foams. I had not gotten around to trying uh, silicone, though I think it was on my list for one of the things to try. But I did quite a few things. I even replaced the standard plate with a polycarbonate plate, which did make a little bit of a difference for the balance, but not really much. And it didn't do much for the sound. And for some reason, I just had this odd in the IOP key cluster it just sounded funny it was almost like it was tapping on something but i didn't there was clearance so i don't know what that was all about i was afraid that maybe some of those issues were going to transfer over but i went ahead and took it apart they include two, two different thickness of below the case foam and they say that uh the thicker one allows for less bounce or less flex, but more sound uniformity. And the middle one is kind of in the middle. So I went with the middle. 
Now, they also give you gaskets, uh, three different types of gaskets, though I received three bags, two bags were the same exact gasket. So maybe a little QA, QC needs to go into that a little bit better because now granted, I, I went with the medium one anyway, so um, which is the their glorious, their own um, gaskets. And I did the bottom. I did not touch the tops. They already had um, gaskets that were installed. And since we're redoing the bottom, all I really did was the bottom. I did not apply the force break mod, though the tape from the force break mod was still on the uh, on the upper half of the shell. Um, so I went ahead and, and used the middle foam. I re reattached or re built i had to take off the stabilizers the screw-in stabilizers and uh these i want to say these are sumson i had a lot of issues originally with the goat stabilizers so i went ahead and had already replaced those stabilizers so i took them and moved them from the old pcb to the new pcb um, and reassembled it uh, using uh the middle gaskets the glorious gaskets uh the middle case foam layer no tape no nothing um, the PC plate, which is not the stock plate, but I reassembled it and I, I mean, I don't want to be hyperbolic, but I mean, half of it did change. It's a brand new keyboard. The difference is night and day. I am still working on getting my sound working just right. <laughs> I've got the XLR microphone, a, a Shure microphone, and it's either way too loud or way too soft, but I'm getting there. It's a combination of the, I may just need to get a different digital audio device, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, the sound test, I think you can get an idea. Not that it sounded awful before doing the flex kit, but it wasn't satisfactory and it felt fun. I mean, especially up in the right upper hand quadrant. I don't know what was going on in that section. Like I said, I looked over and over again. There was nothing in the way, but for some reason that area was just not right and the keys would pop up sometimes just from pressing them with the switch and the key would just pop out of the pl out of place i did go ahead and replace the uh as it comes with two plate pcb standoffs so i replaced that put it all back together and i gotta say i was completely surprised i did not expect for it to make such a big difference yes like i said it's a different bottom um I wish I would have weighed it before and after, but I got to say that I think that the uh, the original bottom is probably heavier and it seemed to have more metal. Um, although I don't feel a difference once I hold this together. Now it does have a different bottom uh, as they've changed their logo. But I went ahead and loaded it up with their GPBT. Um, these are, yeah, these are cherry. GPBT grapefruit which I actually like. I, at first, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but I'm a big sucker for gradients. And if you've been watching my channel or following along for a while, you'll notice that I have a lot of gradient keycaps set. I think I got one right up here. Oh, a couple of them, actually. Uh, but I'm a big fan of the gradient keycap set. But after putting this thing together, I was, um, like I said, Yes, my expectations were low, so that kind of played into it. When I started typing on it, I was like, this is a completely different keyboard. This is not what I'm used to. And mind you, besides using, I did add to the new PCB, I did add switch pads. Um, now, I had previously been using PE foam, but since I had it open, I've got um, pulling keys gave me a give me a sample of all their products, including some switch pads. And these are pour on switch pads that have the full window. So they're just a lot easier to put onto the PCB when it's out instead of trying to fishing them in there when, you know, the plate and everything, when it's already assembled. So uh, that's really the only mod, I guess I would say I did, uh, but I wanted it to be a little bit closer to how the original one sounded. Um, but the difference to me is night and day. I think the uh, sound test will kind of give you guys an example. I will probably come back to it um, and do another sound test once I do have uh, my microphone and audio all set up and working correctly. But I've got to say, I am, I am now happy with this keyboard. Again, I want to be clear. I learned a lot from going in and modding uh, the GMMK Pro. Uh, it never reached 
a happy place for me. So that meant I kept going at it. There was a while there that I was going at it every other day, trying something, trying this, trying that. I'd come across a video or come across a post and somebody said, I did this and that worked. It, it served for me for the, uh, I had it for almost two years or over two years. But despite not being happy, I learned a lot from all the times that I opened it up and I tried different materials and I tried different modifications and I, I tried different tricks it it helped me to get an idea for things that work and things that don't things that might be worth the effort and things that will just be a waste of time i don't look at that in a negative light in fact i i think that i had the gmmk pro has helped me to learn a lot about keyboards and it has served as a good platform for me finding out what i like in a keyboard and what I don't like, because a lot of the times, I mean, well, until now, I really haven't been super happy with it, but I've always been striving to get to that place, that better place. I am now happy with this keyboard. Um, not only, I mean, it doesn't have crazy flex, but again, I use the medium one and they say using none would give you the most amount of flex, but flex isn't for me, the most important thing. I like a little bit of it. For me, sound uniform uniformity going up and down the rows is way more important for me. Well, feel as well. But the sound on this has become, it, it, it really feels like another keyboard. And for all intents and purposes, I mean, it's the whole uh, a question with a ship. If you little by little replace every plank of a ship, once you've replaced everything, is it still the same ship or is it a new one? Well, I was not happy with this keyboard before. I got to say I'm happy with it now. I intend to come back to it and actually apply some of the mods that I think will really make a difference now that I have a much better base to come off of. But this is, for me, like a brand new keyboard. And on their website, I noticed they're also allowing you to buy if you're going to buy it from them and you know how they have their builder where you can select the switches and the keycaps and the cables and everything like that, you can actually select this. And I think it only changes the price by $10 or none. If, or it might have been on sale when I saw it, but you don't have to go out and buy the old one and then spend the extra money to get the flex kit because you can get it right off the bat. And I think that's pretty cool. But again, this keyboard has gone from something that I would look at, and every time I looked at it, it just, it hurt a little bit because I, I felt like, ah, that keyboard beat me. I still haven't been able to get the sound that I want out of it, out of it. But now I look at it and I smile and I'm looking forward to coming back. This is the GMMK Pro Flex, I guess now. Or, I mean, it's not really an R2, but I mean, things have changed and it really does in my opinion feel and sound significantly better to me this is almost like a new keyboard um i almost want to say gmmk pro 2 but obviously people start searching and be like i can't find it so this is the gmmk pro with the flex kit and the grapefruit gppt uh, die sub keycaps that are nice and thick but I'm going to go ahead and do a sound test before before the changes, after the changes, and then a quick supercut between the two. So you guys can decide. What do you guys think? Has this keyboard now stepped up? I mean, yes, I, granted, to those who have already purchased it to have to purchase something else to make it good. Uh, I, I get that. But to me, I finally get to tame that beast that I wasn't able to was finally able to get the GMMK Pro to sound and feel like a keyboard I can use every day. And I will be using it every day. So it's going to be my daily driver for the next week. And I'll probably be coming back to it soon, though. I do have, I do have a whole bunch of other videos. I've filmed a whole bunch, um, but I needed a lot of editing to do. Not for nothing. I was sick for a little while and there's other stuff going on. So I got kind of I got a little behind on my schedule. I am now, I'm catching back up. I am still about a week off, but hopefully over this next week, I can just double up and I'll catch back up and be back on a regular schedule because I do have a lot of keyboards just waiting to be modded. Um, and yeah, 
you guys are asking me about it. So I almost think I want to add something to my blog to where I can, you guys could score it and be like, all right, we really like, you know, your reviews and everything, but can you get to X, Y, and Z keyboard? Kind of like a, a poll, see which one, which, which keyboard you guys want me to get at, you know, next, because I do, I, I have a, a long, long, long list of keyboards that I intend to mod and for most of them I have pretty good ideas where I'm going to go with them. And don't get me wrong, I love checking out, you know, new keyboards and reviewing keyboards I haven't had a chance to do or haven't had a chance to take a look at before. But modding keyboards and, and taking a keyboard from sounding like a cheap piece of plastic to a beautiful orchestra, uh, it's probably going too far. A, a good tap dancer or a kid dropping a bowl of marbles or yeah, a kid dropping a bowl of marbles on a glass table. I don't know. I enjoy making the keyboard sound better. Um, I enjoy going in there and trying different things and seeing how this will work. And like I said, that's my process. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video of me uh, doing all that because this, this, it, it took me a little while as I'd already done so many mods to it. And I was also doing the PCB switching out. So if I wasn't switching out the PCB, it would have been a little bit quicker because um, I would have just taken it uh, plate and all and just moved it to the new case. But um, the way that it sounds now, it's a really good base. And I, I think that I'm going to be able to take this keyboard to a whole nother level and make it if not one of my best sounding keyboards, one of the top, at least in the top 10, because I mean, like I said, it's bone stock except for the switch pads on the PCB and it sounds and feels lovely. Just wait till I come back with some other mods. I think it's going to sound even better. So today we uh, took my GMMK Pro and made it a GMMK Pro Flex Kit for the next revision. And um, <laughs> I like it. I, I got to say, I'm, I'm honestly quite surprised. I did have my expectations low. Even if I had my expectations a little bit higher, I think I still would have been surprised. I think that Glorious came through. Um, and really, I mean, they there was some thought and effort put into this. It's not just, you know, oh, it's it's a clean case. No, the, clay, the, the bottom case is different. Um, so... I'm going to give you guys the stock sound test or the sound test prior to the flex mod because it's not stock by any means. At that point, it was very, very modded, but not sounding or feeling very good at all, even with the PC plate. And I'll mix in the post flex kit sound test. And I'd really love to hear what you guys think. Do you think it made a difference? Would you do it um, if you have the GMMK Pro or is yours already reached? your perfection level without the flux kit. I'd love to hear about it. So in the comments below, let's start a conversation. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.